Greetings and blessings upon you all, Faith Chapel. And so we are gathering together again to worship our Lord. And we are coming close to our end of our act series. So, as we bring ourselves in, as we calm our minds and step away from the world to worship our Lord, let us begin prayerfully. So let us pray. Holy and majestic God, our minds just can't possibly wrap around all of your might and all of your wonders. We pray, Lord, that we get small glimpses of that and that we are reminded that you are the creator of all time and of all space. And that when we step out into the world and place our foot upon the ground, we are stepping on that which you created. That when we take a deep breath of fresh air, that too is what you created. And that when we can feel our hearts beat within our chest, setting a time and a rhythm known by you, that we know that we are created by you. We pray, Lord, that as we hear your word this day, we are, one, we are reminded of the great and mighty acts that you have done and that you continually call to us no matter how far we wander away you call us back and you welcome us in and that it is you who created the way for that to be we pray Lord that when we hear your word, we can glimpse just a little bit more of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our reading for today is a little broken up. <clears throat> it is from Acts. And it is, it is chapter 6, verses 8 through 13, and then chapter 7, verses 48 through 60. A little bit of a jump. Good reading in between. By all means, feel free to read that too. But that is the reading for today. So listen to the word of our Lord. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Sicilia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, We have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified, this fellow never stops speaking against the holy place and against the law. 
However, this is Stephen now speaking on his own behalf and our Lord's. However, the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. And Saul approved of their killing him. This is the word of our Lord. And we had, in a previous one of our Acts series, we had went over the persecution of the church, the very beginning of it. And here we see it deepen and it gets worse. And a man who is an elder of the church, a man chosen by the people, the disciples, and consecrated by the very apostles as being someone who was led by the Holy Spirit and was filled with wisdom. And here he is, tortured, because a stoning cannot be described as any other way, tortured and killed for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is a significant time in the church, in the very beginning of the church, for he is the first to die after Jesus. So this holds a lot of what will come. But again, bearing false witness never ends well for anyone. And certainly not having our hearts and our minds open to our Lord creates even worse things. So next week, we will step in a little bit more into going further out from the very beginning of the church. And I look forward to seeing you. But before we end our time together, let us pray. 
loving God. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us. Even in the most troubling of times, just as you were with Stephen in his. We pray, Lord, that no matter the suffering, no matter the turmoil, no matter what may come, that we will feel and know your comfort. And may you strengthen us to continue to be sharers of your gospel in this world. Not for ourselves, but so that the world can be changed through you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings upon you all.